It's mandatory video time. <sighs> mandatory. Can't have a YouTube channel and not do it. That means you have to do it. Because people ask the questions. What questions? What was your top five? Count them. One, two, three, double dose, five. Best games of 2014. I've got to say, I think we had to go over the list. It was a bit of a shit year, I think. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't know. massive. Like last year, we had some huge ones like Deadpool and that, but I didn't have. I had a few classics this year, but nothing great, really. No, I, Mega. Get, I get you. you know, I, get I, you. I didn't have a choice of about 10. That's what I'd say. I didn't have a choice of about 10 games that I thought were kick ass. You didn't have a choice. No, I had like six to choose five of. Okay. Do you know okay. what I mean? I didn't have like 10 to try and whittle it down or anything like that. No, I get you. I get. I think I had about eight. Yeah, exactly. Most of it's five. Okay, so the way we've done this, and this is genuine, so we're not lying, is we've got it on bits of paper in front of us. We're going to flip it over so we don't know who chose what. We don't, do we? We don't. It's a complete surprise to me and you. But you know yours and I know mine, but we well, don't know I the other way around. So. We don't know the other so. way around. Right, so I'm going to go first. My number five, Assassin's Creed Unity. <laughs> can you imagine? You, you. Can you imagine? Can you oh, imagine? No, you. not really. What was no what's this one? That. Right, and your number five is the delicious, highly, highly anticipated Wildstar. <laughs> I feel tight. Said no one I ever. I feel tight. But let's put it this oh, way. Oh, this is it so, had, so it easy. It had to appear in at least one person's top five Ooh. globally. Let's be honest. Burn. Sick burn. All right, okay, here's my genuine. All right, number five. You ready? Go for it. My that's number it. five is, you read it. Isaac Rebirth. Isaac wow. Rebirth. Right, wow. I had to squeeze it at number five because Isaac the Original was one of my favourite games of yes, all time. Yes, I remember. Easy. It's one of my most played games ever. Yeah. Rebirth is a brand new game. I'm not having anybody say it's just a remake. It's not. <laughs> it's not just a remake and it's so much better. I don't think I'll get the same life out of it because there's a lot of still some similar stuff. Yes. But it's different enough to be its own game and okay. it fucking rocks. It's, cool, it's the toilet game of the year. The toilet game. The PS oh, Vita. On the throne. Oh, it's a bowel movement and a half. Beautiful. And you can beautiful. save progress, which means we can return. Really? We can return. <laughs> we can return. Right, so your number five is... Flipping it. The Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, man. Really? Really. This is it. I I'm don't... disappointed it didn't Why? make my top ten. Really? It was all right. Well, the thing is for me is... I like what I like. I don't buy games because of the hype. I don't buy game. Well, mm. I, I can't actually say that for Shadow of Mordor. It did have hype. <laughs> the hype was real. I don't get them for their reviews. If I like the look of a game, I will buy a game, and I got That's that. Fair. And let's be honest, it's it a decent looks game. Like, exactly, it's a decent game. I 100 percented it. I can't be that same hard. as I 100 percented that game. Can we top I did. shelf that? Top shelf. 100 yes. percented the shit out of it. All side thing, quest done. The thing is, I love the Assassin's Creed. Well, most of them. That's what bugs me, and you know it is. Yeah. I know, but it's just basically, and I love the the Lord of the Rings franchise. So you mix those up with some really, really cool mechanics, and I actually really enjoyed it. And it was to the point where very few games these days, mostly due to time, that I will go out of my way to do the additionals for it. Yeah. I will do the main storyline or any additionals that will help me. But on that one, I did because that's one of those I games though where I do it. the additionals before I do the main story. No, that's what I, I was fuck doing. myself though because you get so powerful in Shadow exactly, of Mordor exactly. that the rest of the game is a cakewalk yeah, completely. I get you. Right, yeah. my number four. You ready? Go for it. Oh, you, you flip it. Go. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein: The New Order, man. Nice. That game fucking nice. rocked. Brutal. It good. Brutal as it really? shit. Oh, it's graphic. That game is way graphic, and I loved every second of it. It was. I mean, I like my FPS story modes Define big time. Fine graphic. Oh, there's a lot of ripping spines out. Graphically detailed ripping of spines from machinery. Beautiful. And some crazy... You've got the evil doctor, and he's doing odd, odd surgery. Oh, Nazi Everything. evil doctor. Nazi evil surgery doctor. Textbook play. All the boxes Textbook. ticked. I loved it. I loved it. Right. I'm going to flip some. Number four. South Park, the stick of truth. Had to be there. South Park. The the fucking thing, hilarious from start to finish. It's so good. But it ev- all of it is like... You know, like... Um, when you're watching a, let's say, reality TV program or some sort of penetrating interview where you really cringe and you're like, oh, that is filled with them moments. It's like the- digs at celebrities, but it's a really would, good RPG. Would you ever play it again? I wouldn't. I loved it from start to finish. No, I'd totally never play agree. it again. Exactly. I, the thing is, I do a lot of films like that as well. I think beautiful film, but I don't want to watch it. I'd probably do it again. Because the main jokes right are part of the story, not class based. There's nothing class based that would change the game for me. Because the no. best stuff is going into the anus and you see the dildos in big gay <laughs> house giving it out. And fucking uh, Morgan Freeman turns up growing the liver yes. spots. All that kind of shit. Yes. I mean, I, I might play it again in two years because there's a lot of that game that I forgot. But yeah. fucking what a game! A really good game. Flip it, number three. Let's do it. Who've you got? Let's have a look. Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea Dose. 
Now, I'm claiming this is its own game, as it's totally separate f- from Bioshock Infinite, and what a fucking ending to that series. Like One of my favourite series yeah. ever. And well, it tied everything up. The way that they did Infinite was ripe for different yep. stories and interpretations and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I totally get you. I want to make the differential. Burial at Sea Part 1? Fucking shit. Hated it. Really? Burial at Sea Part 1 was terrible. Burial at Sea Part 2? Everything I could have wanted nice. from that story. And nice. to come to the end of the Bioshock series was genius. Was I that the last it. one? Yeah, because the company's broke up. It's gone. Really? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're oh, gone. They're completely gone. So there's no more Bioshocks coming on. But going unless... out on a high, though. Oh, seriously. Yeah. One of the best games. I absolutely loved it. And awesome. it's about two hours long, but I played through it. I think I recorded, because I wanted to do a video on it, I recorded the whole game through three times yeah. from start to finish. and played it three times. Yeah. Number three... Are we on three? Yes. Right, number three of yours, Far Cry 4, a newcomer. Yes. Sweeping its heels in. Yes. Go. Uh, I've I got it, it recently. I've never played any of the Far Cries, admittedly. Besides um, Blood Dragon. Apart from Blood Dragon, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. That goes without saying. That mm. game is awesome. It is. But um, but yeah, it's uh, a lot of people have said it's like three with a lot of perks, like a lot of improvements. Just a bit of sl- more slap on it. Yeah, but the actual the story, the cutscenes, the characters. Um, this is another thing like Shadows of Mordor where... You want to do everything around it, and that is a big ass. That's what I did in Blood Dragon. It's the Far Cry way. I did everything in Blood Dragon. I think the main story in Blood Dragon, if I remember, was like six six quests. But I did everything, collected all the videotapes, did everything, unlocked all the suit because you got this like the Terminator gun and all that. Yeah. And it's just, I imagine it's exactly the same in Far Cry Four. It's like the is the animal hunting and all that kind of shit. Yes, to upgrade all your things and that. But what I like about it is, I mean, here's the thing: it put me off, and I don't know why. It's just the way that my brain works. When I see the front cover of Far Cry Four, it's got a guy with a blonde comb over in a pink suit with his hand on someone's head i think really that's like the that sounds like javier bardem exactly but then in the first cutscene when you actually meet him he's terrifying (laughs) he's like he's like javier bardem oh cool comparison he's absolutely terrifying and then every time you do more things to the map like to take over his land he's called pagan min and he owns he's basically the king the god and the more of his land you take over, he keeps contacting you as like as a friendly voice sort of thing over mm. your walkie-talkies. Like uh, in from Borderlands, sort of. But uh, yeah, exactly. Like handsome yeah. Jack. Handsome Jack. Like yeah, handsome yeah. Jack. Yeah. But um, as you progress in, like the more weapons you unlock, and when you're actually going hunting for beasts, or just the the little the little intricacies, get set in India, you get a, a one-man helicopter called a buzzer. Yeah. And you can basically like from Magnum PI. Exactly. Like from James <laughs> Bond. <laughs> But you're flying over India, the landscape's beautiful, and then you you could go over random events and see it, and whatever weapon you're carrying, you can shoot it off your buzzer, like I've got a grenade launcher, where I'll fly over a base and obliterate it. Pepper it. Exactly. We're getting shit on, this literally. This is my base now. Question, though, it. PC issues, any? Um, People said it had all sorts. I don't see it at you all. Did, you got, thing you is, didn't have any. I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie, I'm playing it on medium, purely because okay. I've got a very old system. But it runs it perfectly. No slowdown, no graphical glitches, um, I know that um, a friend of ours had their save game corrupt, but that's not that could be anything. That sounds um, like Ubi. Exactly. But, it's a um, Ubisoft game, isn't it? I'm sure yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> you but play I it. absolutely love it. All right, my number two, go. You can flip it. I will do. South Park. South Park, you yeah, man. Fucking right. South Park was easily one of the best, probably 36 hours. I'm not, I'm not sure how long I played it. But that was pure entertainment. Do you know what made that finish. game ramp up in everyone's profile is the fact that A, it's South Park, B, it's hilarious, and C, it's actually a really fucking good RPG. Yeah, it was a great RPG. Enough. I mean, it was. I mean, it was repetitive, but not enough to make me spoil the, uh, to be fed up in the game. Yes. And I spent ages just like sitting in the cinema, just listening to all the Rob Schneider jokes, all that kind of shit. <laughs> Rob I just is a stapler. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. I was like, I can just chill in here and listen to this. And it's everything I want out of a South Park game. Because we played South Park 64 and all that kind of shit. And they were awful. Yes. Really fucking yes. bad. And like the Family Guy MMO, we tried that. You know, all oh, these wow. sort of cartoon rips. And they were always been crap. But the South Park game was just fucking fruity. It was really fruity. Good. Absolutely. Right, number two. For me? Hearthstone. It, it didn't make my top it five. Had to be there. I absolutely love it. I've gone right yet. off it. Really? It just I still enjoy watching it occasionally. But playing it, I can't say I've logged... I, well, you saw on the stream. I think we logged in. I hadn't oh, logged in since even, BlizzCon. Don't remind me. But since before BlizzCon, I just—I don't know what it was. It was fun, and then I just went done. It's for me. It's unbelievable. It, the fact that you—you you don't have to spend a penny. You really don't, even though it has the microtransaction option. You don't have to spend a penny. It's so versatile. You can play it at home. You can play it at work. You can play it on the. Is it move. your crapper game? 
It what? Your crapper game. It is my crapper is game. Is it your crapper that game? Is, that you're is on the to throne. me what Isaac is to it's you. It's the game of the throne. Yes. But um, the expansions, uh, Naxxramas, uh, Goblins and Gnomes, absolutely love it. Every time they do it, it changes the meta of the game. You can't have a set deck that's going to see you all the way through. It's not going to happen. But I absolutely love it. And it's one of those games, like, um, just a really quick example is right now, uh, it, when we raid at night, about halfway through the raid, we take a 10 minute break. When that 10 minute break happens, stuff. everyone jumps on a hearthstone. <laughs> it's like, right. Why okay. take a break if it's not even going AFK? <laughs> oh, no, it's just like, it's, <laughs> like, it's like to take your head out of the yeah, grind yeah, for yeah, 10 minutes. It. But then, like, two people will play, like, I'll play someone, and the rest will spectate if they're not, like, playing the other game. Because you can spectate actual <laughs> games now. It's an actual like. hearthstone break. Exactly. Hello, an actual like, hearthstone break. But, like, the applications of the game, it's like we went to see the finals at BlizzCon, and I absolutely loved it. It's got that excitement factor, what I assume a sports fan every has, time, like, in it, a Yeah, in the comp competitive side, every time yeah. the cards flip, it's a fucking moment. And exactly. that's what it was at BlizzCon is you could see everything that was happening and make predictions and then suddenly the new card came out. And it was if it was it a changed, game changer, yeah. it was a great moment. I mean, from a spectator's point of view. Right, my number one. Kind of obvious, I guess. Wad. 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 I can't, how could I not put it in? It came out this year. And Beautiful. frankly, I fucking adored every it's second of it. Awesome. Every single fucking second it of it. It is a game changer. Yeah, I know some people... I did a video recently because some... It's like, even my brother said he doesn't play it anymore. Right. And he says... I'm, and he, it was the quote that really grabbed my attention over dinner. He was like, I know this is fantastic and I know this is the best expansion they've ever done and I'm not a part of it. And I'm lucky enough to be a part of it and adore it. Why is he not a part of it? Uh, no support of guilds and stuff like that and it's not... Uh, it's very... Everything's optional in Wad. I get that. Yeah, Everything's I optional. That. So if you're not like, um, if you're not like, got the support of a guild and everything's sort of set up and you've got a rhythm of things going on and you're not of the, uh, I log in and I've got a list of things I want to get done. Yes. Where he logs in, he does his guy submissions and he's like, well, I've got nothing to do and then logs out. So, really? but yeah, yeah. So he's not playing, but oh, he knows okay. it's good. He's just not a part of yes. it. So he's I get you. You're I number one. You ready? Do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was gonna happen. Oh god, we like such it fanboys now. But yeah, happen. totally. I, I absolutely but, but, fucking love it. You know why it. it's it actually ramped up there for me is um, I think we have the direct comparison of Miss of Pandaria right next to it purely because it was the expansion. Doesn't it feel before. like a dog shit expansion? Yes, and let me tell you why. It's because by the middle of the first raid in Mist, I was ready for leaving, and shortly after I did leave, I thought yeah, I true. hate it. Absolutely hate it. Um, and, and for Warlords of Draenor, all the beta stuff... I never logged into beta. I logged into beta once to do... Yeah, you did the start thing with me. Yep, yeah, for you. Um, and that was it. I, I just put my head in the sand. I don't want to know anything about it. I knew the things like we got a garrison, blah, blah, blah. But then I jumped into the game, so it was all fresh to me. And I absolutely loved it. I drunk it in. The cutscenes are amazing. The starting quest is really, really good. And then you got the variation of what you can do outside of the starter quest. You've got a garrison where you're like, the, you're the commander in this army. Yep. That feeling of being like someone in charge and everyone addresses you as commander and stuff like that. It's a total game changer. And I love it. Boss mechanics, raids, things that are coming up as well. It's constantly got me excited for what's happening. Well, I've got a review out. of High Mall coming up. So I think uh, the raids deserve a little overview because we always yeah. compare raids side by side, but before it gets rose tinted. Yeah. And we start looking back, and then the new one comes out. So I'm going to do that as well. But there you go, top five, 2014. Now you can, you've got your answers. There you go. There you go. So Have a happy new year, team. Happy new year. Bye, guys. Peace.